Hi, this is Paul Abrams from RTV Limited, and I'm interviewing Liz Pancamo from The Color Palette in Lindenhurst, New York. Uh, Liz is a female entrepreneur, and we're going to be highlighting female entrepreneurs over the next couple of weeks and their stories and how they built their businesses and how they're building their businesses and scaling them using what I call the pillars of business, people, process, and the profits or the financial side of the business. Then we're also going to talk about how she stays motivated and how she rings the bell every day. Liz, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Paulie. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So Liz knows me better than most. We lived together for a couple of years in college, um, more or less. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, and uh, she's married to one of my best friends. So, uh, you know, this I thought would be a great example. And it's always good to use your network first to, to interview people. So Liz... You know, tell us more about yourself for everybody else who's listening and, and then your business. All right. Well, I just started in July a, an art studio. It's a baby it's business. It's a baby yes, business. Yes. Started yeah. from nothing. Mm -hmm. um, an time. art studio locally. Uh -huh. um, the town that I live in is doing a revitalization, revitalization, basically. So I figured it's now or never. Mm -hmm. um, it's also a very easy commute. So that's nice. Um, but um the town need, definitely needed something for um a little more creative and artistic for people to do i have a lot of kids that come in so that's a big thing um we do art for all ages but the kids are you know the most important and that's where um, i'm really thriving a lot is uh, art for kids um you know they cut art from a lot of the programs in public school yeah, no, even in private, yeah, even in private school as well. Um, so I have a lot of, um, I think I will have a lot of people coming in to fulfill those voids there. So, so your target demographic and market or the person that you're going after is, is who? Well, it's, it's definitely art. I, I like to promote art for all ages, but for sure it is moms and dads looking to get their children in more creative, a more creative environment, especially with all the um, cuts in the schools and stuff. So um, I would say my target audience are moms. Is there like an age bracket? Um, we have mainly, I would say three to 10. Is, for the kids, for the kids. Uh, yeah, three to ten for the kids, and you know the moms are, I guess, in their late twenties and thirties. Yeah, mommyish. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever age they are. I mean, we have right. grandmas and grandpas as well. So, um, yeah, but the biggest, my biggest target is children for sure. Right, and with them, are you only doing kids class? You're doing adult classes too. I have kids, tweens, teens, and adult classes. Okay. I offer cl art classes for all ages, you know, separate, um, separate classes. And then um, we have toddler stuff because that's a big thing. You know, where can mom or dad take their kid during the day when the other children are in school or um, even if it's their first child, what can we do outside of the house? Right. Um, Not just also, watch Mickey. Hmm? Not just watch Mickey all day. Yes, we're not just gonna watch Mickey, Mickey's Clubhouse. Yeah, <laughs> but we can go paint Mickey for sure. That's right. Um, you know, I provide a full service art studio. I help, even if it's just an open paint where they just come in. I will draw Mickey for them, and they can paint Mickey. Like anything that they like to relate the art back to something that they're fond of, mm -hmm. and um, they'll enjoy it that much more. Um, we do a lot of, like I said, we do a lot of kids stuff. We have adult stuff as well, you know, paint and sip. Moms and dads need to get out too. So yeah. we have everything, all hours and um, not all hours, but you know what I'm saying. Daytime and early nighttime. Correct. <laughs> so. so tell us more about your background and how you got into this. So I was working my butt off. <laughs> for someone else which, and traveling you know, a lot I remember. and traveling a lot mm -hmm. and that was amazing when i was in my 20s and i didn't have any children um but then once i had children it was really it was too much you know when you're going across the world for holidays and for weeks at a time it's again amazing experience but 
you don't want to leave your kids. It's just the bottom line. You really don't want to leave your kids. And staying at home, eh, not really for me either. (laughs) So it was good to find something that I loved that I can include my kids in most of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it got started. Right. I, uh, was doing, it was mainly graphic design that I was doing and overseeing graphic design and production. And I just said, let me go back to my roots. You know, what did you learn in not even just college, but what did you learn in elementary school? Like how right. do colors mix and mm-hmm. how does this, you know, how can this help others? So, Roy G. Biv and a lot yes. more. Yes. <laughs> what is the rainbow? <laughs> and right. what is the color wheel? So right. um, I'm doing all that with kids, you know, children of all ages and all mm-hmm. different levels of art, just to try to share my knowledge and, um, you know, also just keep my, you know, myself happy as far as um, this is where I came from. I am an artist. So right. let's share and play and uh, paint. Right. <laughs> Um, so you, you started this because obviously there was a, you were kind of burnt out and yes, for sure. then, you know, what gave you inspiration of it other than obviously the burnout, but you know, and how, what kind of research did you do or, or what kind of books did you read to get something like this started? And obviously you had the artistic background, right? So we, we take the, something you're passionate about, right? It's like, I love helping people. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm passionate about helping that, whether it's through consulting or training or coaching or whatever the case may be. I love help and sales, right? That's what I'm good at. It, yes. You know, um, you did the same thing, right? You took art and you said, now what can I do and how can I parlay this into a business? So tell us about that path. Uh, well, I took all, I mean, everything that I did prior, I learned so much about business, which really I felt like, what do I know? You know, what does anyone know about business? Especially from an artist background and business, it, you don't generally see that coming together. So I learned a lot from everything I did in my, you know, previous endeavors at, you know, traveling and all that. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot about business, but I did kind of as a manager lose, you know, all the artistic abilities and confidence in what I know I can draw. I know I can paint and do all that more fine arts rather than, um, you know, so much graphic design, which when I went to school in early 2000s, <laughs> you, Shh, yes, don't tell us everybody how old we are. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you want anything to do with art, you're going to have to do graphic design. That's the only way you're going to make money and blah, blah. That's all you heard. Now there's an influx of graphic designers everywhere mm-hmm. and they're very creative and, but they're probably pumping stuff out, you know, for, a business and losing touch with the original, you know, basics of art. So I was like, let me pull away for a little and um, remember every, all my roots and everything I learned and tie in all the business aspects I learned doing the corporate stuff and put it together and create my own business. I always wanted to have an art studio and like you said, help people, and it's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. It's good for special needs. It's huge it's for like the veterans population, for yep. PTSD, for, I mean, neurotrauma. It, it's, it's a monstrous help. Yeah. And it's, yeah, just the bottom line, it's, to, it's totally therapeutic. And I think that it's just a little more fulfilling for me to do this, especially on my own, than previous. And it fits better into my lifestyle now with children, young children, as opposed to, you know, you're going across to China for yeah. two weeks. See you later. <laughs> Which was great. But when you have children, it's hard to leave. So right. this ties in everything all together and it's fun. And I really love it. So what have been your biggest challenges so far in you know, scaling into business. It's been six months, six, six and a half months, basically. Um, what, what have you been the biggest challenges you've had faced? Well, definitely, with, even though I'm, you know, saying I take all the business aspects I learn, I don't necessarily know what needs to be done. I didn't know what needed to be done to get this going. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of, you know, 
the permits and, um, you know, you just need like a mentor basically to help you with, I need to, <laughs> yeah. What, where is my checklist? Basically I need a checklist of everything that I need to do as far as, yeah, I can teach art all day, but what permits do I need? Okay. What, um, what is, what's the law about, um, you know, if I have a birthday party, serving food, like all of that, that is a little bit, has been a bit of a struggle. Um, I did have some mentors, but you know, you, you help, they help you at the beginning and then I'm, I feel like, oh, I'm good, I'm good. And I go, and then, you know, things come up like that, that you're like, oh, crap, I need to get that worked out. <laughs> so, so that's been the biggest challenge, just knowing the, so there's um, a process side of it yes. that, that obviously in any business, a process side. So step A through Z to get it started. Do I do an LLC? What kind of yes. LLC do I do? An S corp or a C corp? Yep. You know, for smaller businesses, I would always say an S corp until you're over a half a million to a million dollars in revenue. You should never do anything over an S corp. Um, if it's only going to be you and family members working there, you can, you don't have to, um, you can pay payroll to yourself. Like usually, mm -hmm. you know, a certain amount that really is around 40 to 50% of the gross profits or the net profits. And then you can pay your significant others and even your kids. And this yes. book that I have, it's called the tax and legal playbook. And it's, it's a great stepping stone for people who don't have that accounting background. Um, yes. And then if you do have to bring on employees that are not family members, then you have to bring in workers comp and you have to mm -hmm. get all those other insurances that can add up. Uh, and then after that, it's how are you doing operations and payroll, separating out the two accounts. And then like you're talking about the permits and, and the, you know, more than the financial side of it. Yeah. You know, that financial side, you know, I think was me was the hardest part to get over and even with the MBA, it still was like, okay, am I doing everything correctly here? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's a, a huge thing. So process is big there. Now, you know, that's that's a huge challenge. And then financially, what are your, are you have any challenges there or? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm doing okay. I'm pretty much, I mean, considering I've only been open for six months, I'm breaking even, let's say. That's great. Um, which doesn't, necessarily count my initial investment however um each month i'm breaking even so mm -hmm. you know we're working on it i'm trying to think of new ideas definitely scoping out my competitors to find out what they're yes. doing mm -hmm. um seeing what's popular in the area what's trending um as far as art goes and you know those wood signs they're so popular they're so annoying but mm -hmm. they're so popular <laughs> They're actually, they're great, but they're hard to do. So And they're a um, franchise too. Like there's one yes. in, in my hometown, board and, uh, yeah, but they're, they're a competitor. Yes, and, definitely. And, and they, they market like crazy. Yes. Um, a lot. Of, yeah. That's another challenge also is marketing. You have to stay on top of everything. What, where do I advertise? Um, obviously you can advertise on social media for free for the most part. It's not organically, it's not, organically. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not a hundred percent. You're not going to reach out to everyone. And then if you, want to advertise in the local newspaper, you know, that's like a whole nother shark coming in, like mm -hmm. all them. And you're like, is anyone really reading this or is it just going in the trash? So that's another hurdle that I'm looking at. I'm feeling thing, you know, feeling out the advertising. Of course, I'm fine on social media. Like I understand it. The print, you know, the local newspapers and stuff. I do it. I don't know if, I'm not sure how, if anyone's reading it, I feel like that's, if I have senior day, maybe we'll put that in there. Yeah, that'd but, be um, in there. That's really about it. Otherwise it's, it's a dying, in my opinion, it's a dying. hundred percent. Advertisement. So. So uh, on the, this is a challenge for the people side of it, right? So uh, marketing sales leadership, right? Um, and I would say you created a broad spectrum persona. This is a mom from childbearing age till say 60, right? Mm -hmm. The bulk sure. of them are spending the most of their time on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, 100%. I think so. Um, I think you would be wasting money 100% on print ads. 
<laughs> yes. So I would just take that, write that money off as a bad investment right now and say, yep. and, and stop it. And literally as a friend, I would tell you that and um, don't, don't do it. And even with your seniors, I read recently in an article that more seniors are online age, our mom's age, 65 to 70, because they want to keep in touch with their grandkids. Yeah. So they're seeing. And they're, they're clicking more than anybody else on Facebook. Wow. Oh, okay. Good to know. So you can do a, you can build out on your Facebook manager, which covers Instagram and Facebook, um, a targeted ad for say your Sunday senior day. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and just target them. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Cause I did it for my did. mom. So I, I helped my mom with her business and, and the marketing there with that. And I've, I've, <laughs> I've looked at the numbers tonight. I've, I've grown it a lot through the, the social media, um, and marketing because we did the same thing. We had the same exercise, but I'm talking to you right now. Who is the person? Where are they doing their shopping? Where are they doing their research? You know, for you too, you need to, if you can get into like, I don't want to say a mom's group, but you need to find out who the head Yenta oh, is in your God. town. I know who it is. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you know who it is, make, you know, make friends with them and say, yeah. Listen, come on down. Let's open a bottle of wine. Let's hang out and bring some friends. And it's on the arm, the first, you know, and, but tell them, you know, let them experience and this would be great for your kids we do kids parties we do kids engagements we do stuff when it's raining and snowing and yes. I'm here. i live a block away so i'm here all the time you know yeah that to me would be a great way for you to market that and to sell it without selling right because yes, you don't you're you. not pushing the sale you're order, offering value to people who have some power in the community mm -hmm. and can and bring new people in and refer you because the strongest advertising you're going to have other than social media and, and even any other advertising would be word of mouth. Yes. And I, you know, as well as I do, you're going to trust. If I was to tell you, Liz, uh, you know, this microphone is the best microphone since sliced cheese. You'd be like, oh, okay, well, and you, you know, I want to get one if you were in this place, right? If you're doing the same thing. I'm I doing, would believe you. Right. Cause it's, <laughs> it's word of mouth, right? It's, it's something that we're, we have a trust. We built a friendship, the same thing with this. And, and, you know, that, little thing with a bottle of wine or you know a couple of bottles of wine and, and a free painting class to them makes a big difference yeah you know right, great. so um, i'll do it that's a that's another opportunity there that's probably low cost and more low cost than than spending money on your print ad definitely yeah the print ads cost a lot yeah <clears throat> the only other thing that's that's skewing higher would be uh <laughs> so socials number one uh podcast number two uh, a video podcast then actually billboards number four now still and in our demographics or in our areas philadelphia new york chicago with a lot of commuters <clears throat> it's expensive but yes. you can track it in some respect like how do you hear about us like when people come in the door for the first time you should have them fill out a form if you don't have them do it already like a waiver form um, yes i do that's do another thing you have to have that <laughs> yeah. How did you hear about us? Right. You know, is, and is that automated for you? I mean, can people, if they go on to your website, can they fill out the waiver before they come in? No, but I know I need to set that up. Right. For sure. So, I don't even want all the paper anyway. So, you know, you can, <laughs> if you can get rid of paper. That's a huge, that's a huge difference. Yeah. So, um, and then, so that's another, that's a people side of the business, right? That's helping. How are you, you know, do you have any employees or is it just you doing it right now? It's pretty much just me. Um, mm -hmm. Some, you know, helpful uh, friends and family, but really it's just me. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously you are being the face of the company. You're going to have to live and breathe it for a while. But um, once you do start to scale up, it's going to be making, maintaining that level of customer service throughout, mm -hmm. the time, which, you know, I know you well enough that I know it's not going to be an issue. Um, but hiring the right people to do that will be the issue at some point. Yes. So setting out a process and an onboarding process for them and how you train them and how you run them through everything is going to be important. So, um, yes, definitely. any other, any other tips or tricks to someone say if they want to do something like this and, and in the art world wanted to, to venture into this? Well, I think it is definitely starting to get competitive. 
you do hear a bit more of these places, my type of place opening up. Well, I think it's you you're right to... with the need where schools are shutting down these art programs, you know? Yeah. Um, you have to definitely stay on top of what's popular for sure. So for example, um, what's so popular now? LOL dolls, right? Mm -hmm. They're totally crazy. So that Lala Loopsy? No, this is different. This is oh. LOL, Paulie. Just Google <laughs> okay. it, okay? I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Olivia will totally be into it soon. She's into My Little Pony right now. So <laughs> She'll, all about... LOL's next. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. Um, so it's just a matter of being able to, when the, when the child comes in, like let's just say mom brings a child, just, this is not necessarily for a class. It's just for an open paint. You just mm -hmm. come in. Um, they look at your wall of what can we paint. You have to give them ideas because they're not necessarily going to come in and know what they want. Like a tattoo parlor. Yes. You need something pretty yeah. much. And you need to know what's popular. They need to look at the wall and say, oh my God, OMG, LOL. Dolls are here. So yeah. that's, and, and honestly, I've had, I put that LOL doll up on the wall and I've had people come back for all the different types of LOL dolls. So it's great. Wow. Um, now, granted, that's, you have to put a spin on it. They're licensed dolls. You need to just have, you know, it needs to be a little freehand, you know, just a, an idea. But um, as far as just staying on top of the trends, that is what you need to do. You okay. need to keep those kids happy so they tell mom and dad they're happy and, they, and mom and dad brings them back. Mm -hmm. And you want them to be happy anyway because right. it's so much more fun when you're there with the kids especially when you know i have some drop off events they get dropped off and we have a great time and they want to come back right so it's almost and mom like, wants to drop them off again too it's, it, uh, <laughs> it's, not, free time. it's not babysitting but it's it's structured learning yes structured, yes no um, it's not babysitting yes. yeah because i do the same thing with nicholas's wrestling right so i help nicholas with his wrestling and uh it's the same thing like people drop their kids off and and they go for an hour and a half i beat them up <laughs> yeah no. and for an hour and a half that parent can go whatever you want to go yeah have dinner quietly or you want to go food shopping quietly whatever exactly. it is. they have some time to do their own thing so so other than your fixed cost with um uh, obviously with uh, the paint uh and the space itself what's your other biggest cost that you're that you're hitting right now that's that's hitting your um box? well i generally the cost is for the paint supplies and the canvases and all that. It's not so astronomical. However, you know, the rental space is a lot and the, you know, utilities are a lot. That's really, um, it's a lot to have a business. I want to have it right in my village where it's right by me and it's, um, you know, a cornerstone basically of the village eventually, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, so it is more expensive than, you know, getting something in, let's say a strip mall, you know, on the highway. Um, but I think it's more, it has I think more character. Where your location is now, just so everybody knows where her location is right off the Long Island Railroad. So basically you get up the train and it, it's literally a block away from the train station. Yes. yes. So you if, you were, if you had, if you were marketing out east or out, out to the west, and people came in on a train, had you know, wine and cheese and paint, and then go home, it's safer than than getting in a car and doing it. But, oh, absolutely, yes. We are <laughs> on the most popular branch of the Long Island Railroad is Babylon. Mm -hmm. um, this line, and we are a very heavy stop you know we have trains multiple times an hour for you know for the most part so mm -hmm. um that's great you know that's good for the adult nights um but also it's you know just even the train you can see my place from the train even if you live not even you live 40 minutes out east further than here you can see, look out the train window and you can see my place so i i think the location is very special as well how far is babylon i can't remember how far babylon is from where you are Distance it's car. the next stop on the train. So, uh, would so you, it's ever five, you know, two, three minutes, really. What about advertising on the train? Yeah, I never thought of that. I definitely could look because into that's that. the that's people who are going by, and then, you know, 
that's the other thing. I mean, that, that could be an opportunity, but you yeah, don't, that's don't a get great the idea. first before you invest in it, because you don't know what the ROI is on yeah. something like that. Right. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, that's great. And now, so obviously the fixed costs in most businesses are going to be the biggest issue, right? Your, your lighting, your rent. Yes. That's and really, and your, your, your human capital or, you know, obviously you, but if you had other people on board, that would be the other biggest. Yes. Cost. Payroll and whatnot. Right. So obviously ring the bell means, or RTB means to ring the bell. And, and for me, it's, it's my dad's poem. It's my family. It's, it's what drives me every day to, you know, to work hard. What, what drives you? What really motivates you to do, to do this, to get out? You know, obviously you've taken a huge leap. You've jumped in and went right after yeah. it and started your own business, which that's the hardest part for most people. Um, and then the next steps after are just as hard, but you've done the hardest part. You didn't and do it, but what motivates you to ring the bell every day? Well, I agree with you. Of course I can say, you know, family, all that definitely for sure. 100%. Um, you know, they can tie right into this. Um, I can bring my kids to a lot of the events so they're included and I'm not separated from them. So of course that is great. Um, but and not to sound cheesy, but the smiles on everyone's face when they're there, whether you're four or 94, mm -hmm. I, I've seen all people and they, you know, they come in very apprehensive, not necessarily the children, but people come in apprehensive. They, they're like, I can't paint that. I'm not going to be able to do that. And then when they leave the smile on their face and the group picture of how everyone's came out different, but they all really started with the same instruction and how their own interpretation was of the art is amazing. And um, definitely when I'm having a bad day, whatever it is, whether I'm tired or, you know, I'm just not feeling art one day, I go in and when I meet these people and see these people, it's just totally makes the difference. It makes it all for me. So, I mean, I can give you an example. Yesterday wasn't a great day tired, I get all asleep, my kids have been sick, whatever. Today, I had toddler time, I had quite a few kids, they loved it, and that, I just needed to zone out and forget about everything and hang out with those little toddlers for a little and play with them and paint with them and see how happy they were, and now I'm fine. I, that's awesome. That's yeah, it's just really fulfilling that's that's the best part right when like uh you know when i'm i do the same thing when i coach or, or train somebody and they see the click you know yeah. I see that, that that to me is it's huge but i just saw something else that made me think what makes you happy is that visceral look of someone smiling at the end yes do you have a marketing release in your waiver i do yes i do i can you should 100% videotape what you're doing. Oh, I don't know. See, I I would love to because that's amazing. Like today, I had a child. He wanted nothing to do with it. His mom brought him there because his yeah. friends were there. Mm -hmm. And by the end, he didn't want to leave. She was dragging him out. I can't. I, I wish I could videotape it. Because you're doing it. But if you could have someone. Someone has hold, to be there. Just to do hold it, your yeah. phone, record it when they're coming in. Like, you know, like. Yeah. And when they're leaving, they're like, I don't want to go like that. That would be amazing. You're powerful right. Powerful for you. Yeah. Because that is what makes, I can see it in your face. That one makes you smile. It's going to hit like, I know if Julie saw that, she'd be like, oh, we got to go there again. Like, yeah, yeah. That would be the same thing. So uh, to me, that's a, that's a, that's yeah, what I should, do. I have to. And that's a hundred percent sure. organic, a hundred percent organic. Yeah, you're right. I had, I mean, I had a kid today, he was fighting it. And then by the end he was fighting mom to leave. So, and I, and I personally needed that as well for my motivation because I was just, you know, he yeah. gets, every day is different. Some days you feel like, oh, it's been, it's rough. It's rough. And then you go and do that and you're like, oh wow, this is why I'm doing it. And you remember right. and it's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, Liz, I'm so glad we could finally connect here. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> back and forth <laughs> uh, dinner dinner is more important um hey 
<laughs> Listen, I love the kids. Obviously, I was saying, but I had a kid-free dinner tonight, so we had to take advantage. You know how it is. <laughs> I was solo tonight. It was me and the two girls at you know the sushi restaurant. So. <laughs> oh well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I got the sushi. Um, so appreciate your time, and uh, obviously keep ringing the bell every day. If yes, I definitely. Anyway, just the phone is right there. Pick it up. I'm here to help you. Um, and thanks a lot. Yes, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, everyone knows we're friends. We've explained that we're friends. And I do want to say to you, thank you, because I came to you maybe two years ago, two and a half, two years, a little over. And it was, I was at the barbecue. House. I remember it at the yes, barbecue. Yes, and I was telling you, I got to do something. I had to do something. And you just sat with me and said what do you want you know let's list it what do you want to do what are your goals what are you doing and i think that really you know i really appreciated that really helped me focus a little more and get started and um i just want to say thank you so much yeah. <laughs> and, and i love you, can, you i love you too <laughs> you can see a smile on my face too now yes that. that makes me happy that yes. makes me happy i'll never forget it Oh, <laughs> I won't either. See, I knew exactly what we were talking about. I knew yeah. exactly. Oh, yeah. Single tear. <laughs> All right, Shmoopaloop. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Paulie. I'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye, everyone. Good Bye. luck with your ventures.